Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. The topic of this 10 minute moan is yet another secretive meeting that Humza Yousaf has had where you and I, the Scottish public, are not allowed to know what happened. Okay, now this story has been highlighted in the um, Daily Express and I'm going to read out quite an extensively parts of their um, piece. I'll put a link to it in the bottom so you can read it in full if you wish. And I'll also be looking at some other resources to give you an idea of the type of person that Hums has met It's top secret and um, tell you a bit more about his guest, okay? So what the headline in the paper says is secretive SNP government refused to reveal what Hamza Yousaf spoke about with controversial Palestinian diplomat. Exclusive, the First Minister welcomed Hussam Zomlot who's the head of the Palestinian mission to the UK to Butte House twice in 2023, including November after the Hamas terror attacks on Gaza. Now, before I continue with the story, I just want to give you some details about Hamza's guest, who it turns out actually invited himself. Now, he is Hussam Zomlot. He's about ages with myself. Hamza Said Zomlot. Is a Palestinian diplomat, academic, and economist. He was appointed head of the Palestine Mission in the United Kingdom in October 2018. Before this posting, he served as head of the PLO Mission in the United States. That was before Donald Trump closed the PLO Mission to the United States. Zom Lot is a senior member of Fatah, the main Palestinian political movement and strategist advisor to Palestine President Mohammed Abbas. Okay, he previously served as director of Fatah's Commission to Foreign Relations. Now, here's an odd thing. I don't know if it's relevant or not. I just find the um, the actual detail quite um, unusual. Don't know if it's got anything to do with how he went on to lead his life. But Zomlot was born in Shabura, refugee camp, a United Nations Relief and Work Agency camp in Rafa. This is the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, who recently have funding stopped by almost all of its international donators because they were tied to the invasion of Israel, the terrorist invasion of Israel on the 7th of October which led to a four-figure sum of casualties and still to this day approximately 200 hostages, okay? So I don't know if that's, you know, had any potential impact on Zomlot's adult life, but I would dare say anyone born in a United Nations Relief and Works Agency refugee camp would probably be um, quite um, sympathetic to them, and potentially the ethos of having their people invade other countries along with Hamas terror groups. Now, the secretive Scottish government have refused to release minutes from two meetings between Hamza Yousaf and the controversial Palestine diplomat. The First Minister met Hussam Zolat, who is head of the Palestine mission to the UK twice last year, including once after the terror attack. I have read that about it twice. The summit was organised for the November 17th, with Zomlat requesting to speak to the SNP leader to discuss annoying, ongoing events in the Middle East. This bit I need to stop talking about the story and look into this a wee bit more. Why would anyone who's wanting to discuss the ongoing events in the Middle East talk to a First Minister of a government with no foreign policy powers? What is the point? You would be as well going and talking to the head councillor from Drum Chapel because they would have as much help for you and these um, ongoing events in the Middle East as Hamza Yusuf. Hamza Yusuf has no foreign policy powers. Yet we're not allowed to believe that Mr. Zomlat requested this meeting to discuss the ongoing events in the Middle East. I call bullshit on that. That is not why he would want to meet the First Minister 
who cannot influence anything that's going on in the Middle East. Why would you? He was accompanied to Butte House by his entourage, which included a security guard, an advisor, and someone described in inverted commas as a, the head of the Palestine community. I have no idea what or who that would be. The diplomat is a controversial figure as he repeatedly refused to condemn the killing of innocent people at a music festival in Gaza on October the 7th, which sparked the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. About 1,200 civilians were killed when the terror group launched an attack with dozens of people taken hostage. Mr Zomlat has appeared in various news channels including Sky and Talk TV with Piers Morgan where he failed to uh, condemn Hamas. Speaking on Sky News on October the 10th, three days after the terror attack, he said that his people had been occupied, colonised, besieged for many years and were fighting for their lives. But he did not condemn the Hamas border raids on Israel. And during a heated interview with Mr Morgan on October 19, he rebuffed multiple attempts to get him to do the same. Instead, he called this line of questioning a very vicious and asymmetric game that has contributed to the oppression of my people. That's some claim, isn't it? So somebody saying to you, can you condemn a terror attack where you killed over a thousand innocent people? By asking that question, that makes you contribute to the oppression of Gazeans. I can't figure that out. This is something that really frustrates me about politics and people talking about politics. It's a mental gymnastics that you've got to apply to join the dots with some of their statements. And this one's a cracker. Piers Morgan asked him, can you condemn Israel? He refused to give a yes or no answer. And now he claims that that means that uh, Piers Morgan is helping to contribute to the oppression of people in Gaza. Wow. I love that. That's just right up there with, you know, that's, that's Champions League level um, Olympic gymnastics right there. Now, this is just, I mean, I could go on that you can go and check the, um, the article, as I say, I'll put a link to it below. And it just gives you other things that he suggested he said, like it's told CNN that Israel knew this was coming their way, it's a consequence of their own actions. You get the idea, this type of guy, right? There is not one hope in hell that he met Hamza Yusuf for the suggested reason for meeting him. Why would you why would you go and meet a guy that has got no influence whatsoever on what's going on in Gaza? And what further <laughs> concerns me? The Scottish people are not allowed because the Daily Express have asked, and I would imagine through an FOI, for the minutes of this meeting. You're not getting them. They got, I think they got some from the first meeting, but heavy redacted. So it's just, it's another question mark over the integrity, this openness and transparency that they all. Um, what it you know, leads us to believe that they, they buy into in the SNP. And if you think about it, if what this article suggests, that they met just you know, to talk about the ongoing um, conflict in Gaza, what's the, why would that need to be retracted? But you know, what, what would possibly be talked about in that conversation that the public couldn't know about? Can't even say you know it's all matters of national security. That you know these things cannot be discussed. And I mean because Hamza is not the, the Scottish Parliament does not have any powers for foreign policy. You know, so it, it, it's, it's, it's actual actual nonsense. Another thing that was a bit in the story if you let try and find it, where he talks about Hamza says you know it was really nice to meet um, ah. Mr Zomla also put on X that he'd met the First Minister, he was honoured to meet the family of Scotland's First Minister. Well, they'll say that happens quite a lot when, you know, dignitaries meet each other, they might, you know, introduce their families. I don't see that being a big issue. However, this people's family are in Gaza, so it might make that more uh, likely. 
But is that the real reason for the meeting? Is that why you met? Was it nothing to do with Scottish Parliament? Was it nothing to do with Scottish Government? Was it totally personal and private reasons to meet? Because Humza's apparent brother-in-law, which I can't figure out, you know, Mohammed, you know, we've seen his sister um, talk about her brother quite a lot. Her brother, who obviously doesn't, isn't a full brother because he would be a UK citizen and she wouldn't need to be in tears trying to get him away from Gaza, right? And he is a doctor in apparently a Hamas-controlled hospital in Gaza. His family have been taken out and put in uh, Turkey. I've already discussed that in previous videos, which is a bit stinky as well. And that could be possibly the reason for the meeting. So, you know, I, I can't figure it out. All I know is it's absolutely stinking. And the worst thing is, it's not the fact that they met, right? It's a pointless meeting, right? It's not the fact that he's met this character used to be the envoy for the PLO in America character, this guy. It's not the fact that he's met him, it's the secrecy that surrounds it. And as some people were alluding to with the COVID inquiry, when you cannot, the SNP had a, you know, an office agenda on deleting WhatsApps to hide whatever they were going to hide. And the fact that they, they, they hide them is a bad story in itself. And it must, that story must be bad but what they're hidden, must, they must think, well, it'd be worse if they get out, so we'll accept this bad story because the truth might be even worse. It makes you start thinking the same with this. Saying that these things are redacted, you can't even know about these meetings, is a bad optic. But if they're accepting that optic as opposed to putting it the minutes of a meeting, you can only imagine that the stuff that's in the minutes is more damning than the fact that, you know, there have been more secret and, and um, non-transparent yet again. So there we go. Um, Hamza, you're absolutely stinking, mate. You are, a, you know, a wee bit of advice for you. Just stop. Either give up the leadership, call a general election, and the folk, you know, the Scottish public will do that for you. But you're going to, you're already digging a hole for yourself. It will not get any better. History will look on you very unkindly. And the longer it goes on, the worse it's going to be. Because every day, every passing hour, there's just more shite comes out about you. And your stop is dropping rapidly. So the best thing you could do for, you know, your um, how history uh, judges you is go. Either resign, or call a general election, and let the people remove you. Because that's the way this is going. Okay? If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, please. Subscribe if you want to see more and hit the notifications. Join the comments. We always get a bit of a laugh in there and a bit of banter. Uh, but most importantly of all, have a great day. Bye now.